the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for Pentecost is from the book of Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pomphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken to the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the Holy Gospel according
according to St. John, Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, St. Luke tells us that on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit filled the room and the apostles were filled in their hearts with the Spirit, that they all began to speak so that listeners from all over the world understood what they were saying. Those who were present marveled and asked, what does this mean? Besides being a great Lutheran question, the question itself invites us to explore the depth of what was happening that morning. What does it mean that the Spirit filled the apostles and that people from all over the world were hearing the same message of God's deeds of power? The fact that we see many different nations represented hearing the Word of God together tells us that this is all about drawing the whole world into the good news of Jesus Christ. The Spirit has come to make possible Christ's commission to make disciples of the whole world. And Pentecost, then, is God's action to unify all families and all tribes, all peoples, in Himself by giving them His very own Spirit, so that they will be marked by one common name, Jesus Christ. And to fully understand Pentecost, we must travel back to Genesis 11 and the story of the Tower of Babel. It was there that all humans speaking one language said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the whole face of the earth. And though although only the Lord's name is holy, the here at Babel, men thought they could build a tower to heaven to have a name equivalent to the Lord. Well, they were wrong. And they were wrong not because they were unified in some kind of building project, but because they thought they could get to God through their own building efforts. And because they thought that doing so would give them a name equal to God. And therefore God scattered them, and He scattered their languages. And God knew that humans who think they are gods really wind up destroying themselves. We cannot become immortal through our own deeds. We cannot win eternal glory through our own actions. And so the story of salvation of the whole world then rest on this, that God desires that all people be made holy by His name, for it is only in His name that life and salvation rest. And so we see in the Old Testament, God creates a people, Israel, to bear His name to the world. He gives them a law so that they may show the world what it means to be holy. God fills a temple built by Solomon with his presence to be a house for his name, so that all the whole world might be blessed by it. Human sinfulness, however, always sought its own name over God's name. And so God sent his word, his only son, to become flesh in order that humans might bear the one name, the holy name, the name of God. You might remember the story of David's desire to build the temple in 2 Samuel. David says he wants to build a house for God. But God counters and says he is going to make a house of David. And he promises that David's descendants would reign forever. And this, we confess, was fulfilled in Christ. But in the same way, we have desired to have a name like the Lord's. 
In our sinfulness, we've tried to be God's. We believe the serpent's lie in the garden that we could be like God if only we ate of the fruit. We have believed that we ourselves can live like God's through the accumulation of stuff, through higher education, through gaining power, and so on. But God answers our sinfulness and He says to us, I will freely give you my name. You don't have to destroy yourselves trying to make yourself great, trying to make a name for yourself. I will give you my name. St. Athanasius writes, For the Son of God became man so that we might become God. He doesn't mean, of course, that we become gods or that we replace God, but that through the work of Jesus Christ we get to live in God's eternal love forever. We will never be separated from Him. Instead, we will all be inheritors of God's eternal glory. We are forever bound up and unified in the Lord. And this is what the Spirit has come to do, to unite us as one family with one name. That name is the name of God. That name is Jesus. St. Peter will later preach an act saying, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. And St. Paul will write, At the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And it's this name that becomes our identity. When we are baptized, it becomes our family name. We're baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And we are marked by Him forever. Our new life in baptism comes with a new name, Christ. We are united to Him now and forever. We understand in this world that our names are often about our inheritance. A son will inherit his parents' property, their money, their reputation, because he bears their name. But we now bear one common name, Christian. And because we bear that name, the name of Jesus, we are also promised an eternal, imperishable inheritance. And therefore the church exists as one new, unified family who bears that name. And as all tribes were scattered at Babel, so now we are all brought together through the Spirit at our baptism. We were once scattered by the division of our languages. We are now united by one word who was made flesh for us. And what does this mean? It means that I am not first a portal. It means I am not first an American. I am not even first a husband to my wife, the father of my children. I am first a child of God who lives, works, and worships in his family. The Spirit has set us free first to be who we were created to be in Him. And He has made all other identities flow from that. All other bonds, all other ties are secondary to our identity as a child of God. And this is the Gospel of Pentecost. You are set free to live in Him who will love you and sustain you for all of eternity. There is nothing else on earth or in heaven that can do that. Only God. You cannot build a tower that will love you forever. You cannot build a tower that will give you eternal life. You cannot dwell in a city with a family and a tribe that will save you from yourself. You are, however, filled with the Spirit of God who gives you a family and promises you eternal life through the name that is above all names. And he has given it to you freely. Amen. Now together let us pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, Almighty 